Hey guys, Grinchers here. With the start of a new series, I'll be doing about opening basics. In this series, I'll be aiming to cover a few basic strategies for each faction when considering your turn one plays. My hope is this series will give you a bit more insight as to why certain things are done this way and maybe can help you improve in your own duels. Today I'll be covering Obelisk Vitruvian. Obelisk Vet is a deck that benefits from thinking ahead. Positioning Obelisks so future Dervish get more value is definitely key to understanding how to play this faction. While this guide won't aim to cover every possible situation, it will definitely aim to shed some light on the thought process of what a player usually wants to have when considering the unknown. And now without further ado, let's jump into it. Placing an ethereal obelisk can be tricky. You want to minimize the number of bad outcomes while also being able to protect it. When going first, placing it directly in front of your general can test the largest amount of tiles. The risk is that it is harder to play around removal in future turns, however it is worth the tempo gained in early turns. Placing it next to a mana tile increases the odds of accelerating to 4 mana and makes playing around Lightbender easier, however it can test less area. In most cases, playing it in front of your general is the most correct decision. Pax is similar to playing Ethereal Obelisk. Since it is a battle pet, you cannot take a side mana tile with it typically. Placing it to threaten the opponent's mana tile is usually correct. Sometimes, playing it diagonally can give a chance of it spawning an Iron Dervish on a mana tile after it dies. This is useful if you are playing a 4 drops, but it is RNG based and not consistent. Thus, playing it in the center is the safer bet. Sometimes, you will have the option to counter your opponent's opener. Instead of playing a Dunecaster for minimal value, if you have a Rasha's Curse alongside a Dunecaster, you can pass your first turn. This works the best against decks that often open with tree drops, such as Songhai or Lionar, but not so much against someone like Lilith or Kassava. Here we see Argeon playing his Silver Guard Knight off the mana tile. Believing us unable to make a play, he goes for a greedy opener that gives him more chances to use the mana. However, because of our foresight, we are able to counter it and develop a formidable board at the same time. Be sure to let him know that you had this planned all along. Position the Dunecaster away so we can contest another mana tile next turn. Going second is often preferable since it lets us place a Fireblaze Obelisk sooner. There are a couple ways to do this, however the most important part is to play around effects that punish our placement. Stepping toward the middle can let us contest the board more easily, however we are more vulnerable to effects such as Lightbender this way. Placing the light fire blaze just out of normal minion reach allows us to dodge Lightbender and gives us more space to play with next turn. The other way to play fire blaze safely is to utilize the turtle opener. Instead of moving forward, we take a diagonal step kitty corner of the opponent's minion. This Azerite lion normally has a lot of sway over our early positioning. However, due to this opener, we create a zone of control while also dodging cards like Silverguard Knight. The spawns up here are all decent for contesting the board, and the opponent has to be wary. The last opener to be careful with is the double dispellable minions. In this case, two packs. It is important to play your minions in ways that aren't easily punished. Here we will play around Sunbloom and Lightbender. After placing the first minion on the mana tile, consider where dispel effects can be placed by the opponent, and place the second minion accordingly. This technique can be used with obelisks as well, however I don't recommend playing two ethereal obelisks if the opponent has a minion, as it will likely be removed quite easily. As you can see, thinking ahead is critical to Vitruvian strategy. There are also possible openers I didn't cover, such as vanilla 2-drop going first, like Primus Fist, and double vanilla 2-drop going second. While these openers are not quite as in-depth as the obelisk or pack strategies that I covered, th they are also just as important that you do not play into your opponent's outs. Play around common effects like Holy Immolation or Grasp of Agony when considering these. Another thing to be mindful of is going second. If you do not have a good play and Falcius is your only option, do not be afraid to play it just for tempo, because the body is more important than not. If you do not have something to help contest the board early on, it's likely that you'll be overrun since Vitruvian lacks good comeback mechanics. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. Next time we'll be covering Songhai, so until then, take care everyone, and thanks for watching.